everyone, welcome back. It's Christine again with The Artist Pod, and today we're going to talk about how to draw a Polish buff laced chicken. They're pretty cute, so let's get arting. All right, so here's the Polish buff laced chicken. <laughs> and I think they're really cute, um, if not a little ridiculous. So let's get started. Now they seem to be a mixture of brown and a darker brown and white, but I didn't see any specific pattern to that, so I'm just gonna be kind of mixing it up a bit. Now you'll notice that, you know, I'm doing the feathers very much the way I would do fur, except I can go a little longer because, well, feathers are, their feathers at least are a little longer. Still the same idea. You can create a feathered effect, which we might do a bit of in this video. Um, but you don't have to. Um, even when you're drawing feathers like fur, they're still going to appear to our eyes um, like feathers. Now I'm just trying to give it kind of a... Uh, striped effect. That's kind of how it looks. It's got these lighter brown stripes. There's some darker brown that I'm leaving as well. But these sort of light brown that really goes back and forth with the white, but in almost this dotted stripey pattern. So what I'm also trying to do is make sure that what I've done on the left, I've done on the right. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I don't want like one side to be very heavy with um, a color and then the other side not not mimicking that at all. And then they have kind of this nice natural um, barrier because at the, the bottom of their heads, their necks, they have this almost big fluff of feathers before it goes back into sort of their um, body. And so it creates a nice natural, you know, um, edge to the composition. Sometimes with birds, you kind of have to eyeball it to cut it in a way that, you know, would, would kind of work. But um, these guys had a nice sort of natural end to it. So now we'll do some of the white. It'll start looking less crazy as we get into this. I know right now there's stuff going everywhere. But um, that's just because they have, you know, crazy, crazy hairstyles. It's almost easier to draw when um, you don't have a whole lot of um, sort of empty space, uh, or you have more interest, I should say, like this. You know, I'm going back and forth between different colors. Um, it makes it more interesting than having a, a long area of um, all the same. This helps kind of break it up a bit. The panda was, for instance, a bit more um, monotonous because it's all one color for the most part. So you have a large um, area of not a whole lot of interest happening. It's just um, just sort of that solid white, and I think um, animals that have this kind of crazy stuff happening can be a little bit more interesting to draw. And I'm, I am still kind of deciding on this light brown in some places. Um, I may be adding in more right around his eyes here. That's why I'm not fully filling it in. Gosh, every time I zoom out and look at it, it just cracks me up. It looks like a cartoon character. These birds are adorable. <laughs> He's looking pretty good. If not a little, a little strange. Looks like you just like put him in the dryer and fluffed him up. Now 
Now as I do these little sort of circles, feathers at the bottom, right? Like I'm, I'll come straight down. Ooh, that was a little too overzealous with my straight down. Come straight down and then as I come over, right, I'm gonna angle it. That's how I'm gonna mimic um, a sort of a nice clean preened feather. That edge comes to a center point and then it comes back out. Now that's only for neat feathers. Talked about it a bit when I did the Luna Moth, but um, when you're doing feathers that are a little bit more splayed out, you would have sort of a crisscrossing pattern. They do have feathers kind of, I mean, from what I could tell, I don't know how they see, but um, they do have feathers kind of drooping over their eyes. <laughs> He is looking pretty fancy. All right, so now let's get this darker, darker brown. And see this one, this little section here has more of a feathered look because of how I've done it. Instead of preened together like these, it's more splayed out. All right, the cute guy's taking shape. Fill in a few other gaps. And then we have um, his beak and his eyes. So their beaks are multicolored. And it starts out with a lighter color just on the tip. But it fades very quickly to the darker brown and then to a, a black which we'll do as gray and the gray I mean the um, black isn't it's kind of a grayish black anyway right and then we have gray. Now with the beak, you know, and like fur, you don't want a lot of overlapping, but it is going to kind of fade together and you're going to get that by a kind of a gentle overlap. And I do want to mimic, which that's why I was bringing that in. There's this little like dip right here, you know, it almost looks like they're smiling. So I do want to make sure that's prominent. Um, or at least uh, you can see it without really having to strain to see it. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, they're so cute. So we'll um we'll fill in the eyes a bit later. But there he is. What a interesting bird. I'm just gonna make a few Final refinements here. And then we'll start adding the shadows and highlights. I'm gonna have the light source. I know this might be a big shock, but I'm gonna have it from coming from over here. As always, that means it's coming from above and in front of so that the subject is highlighted. And we're just going to get started. Again, on this side, it's full pin pressure. But of course, as I come to the edge, it won't be. Feathers can be a bit more streaky because of their nature. Um, it's also a lot quicker to do because his feathers are long. So that can really help um, really sort of draw it out quick as I'm making longer strokes to begin with because Feathers are, you know, long and narrow. See, I'm holding off pin pressure as I come to this edge. And with feathers like this, you know, you don't want it even. That is why there's there's clusters and gaps. Is you don't want it to be straight across because that's not what feathers would be. They're going to have 
more um, dips and humps in the overall shape than something with fur would typically have. Now because of the nature of how um, the hair is kind of working right, there's going to be a dip as it's pushing out from the nose, that's why I haven't shadowed that in. There's also going to be some of this in shadow down in here um, because the hair is kind of flopping over itself. And so making sure I get that, that line right is going to be important. Make sure it looks like it has a nice big flop of feathers. And then here as it goes into the beak, because this would be turning away, going to be some shadowing as we come to this side. Likewise, this is going to catch probably a little bit of highlight as it's coming back out on the opposite side. Just a little bit though. And then of course, I mean, right, like his head is kind of this circular shape. So, you know, just like you would with a ball where you have a light source here, although this is going to be a bit of a bumpy ball. Light source here, then as you come around this side, this would be in shadow, right? This is away from the light source with it coming over here. You're going to hit all of this is in shadow. Some of this is going to be catching highlight, but always the edges are in shadow. Probably going to have some highlight here. And then I think I think there's going to be some highlight on this one too, but it might not show up in the white. Uh, maybe down in here, get some little stripes going. And of course it's not exactly a ball, right? Like it's going to have a flopped effect as well. So thinking about how the sh uh, highlights and shadows would work for that. And then all of these feathers over here would definitely be in shadow. This is definitively rounding away. These might be catching highlight though, right in here. And then these would remain. Uh, again, some places there might be some highlighting. Not on this back side, right? This is already kind of flopped. But like up in here, probably a little bit before it fades out away from us. And then maybe even some of this. Maybe a little bit of that. This too, and then it's going to hit. I'm going to say that the rest of that is going to be flopped over, right? So I think that line is where his eyes come off. And then some of this is probably going to be just in a little bit. I almost forgot all the feathers down here. Same thing, right? Edges always in shadow, but he will have um, be having some highlights. He'll also have more shadow on these um, feathers, more obvious shadow because they're overlapping each other and that's very clear. Alright, so you have the beak that's going to be casting a shadow. The flop of the hair that's going to be casting some shadow as well. Probably have some highlight here though. Probably a little bit here. You see I'm not going to come all the way over to that edge that's going to be in shadow. It's also got another top of it. I think that might have a little bit. I'm going to have it go into shadow as it comes here. These kind of bulge up. It's almost like little feathered cheeks. <laughs> oh, they're just so cute. This is going to be in highlight. Some of this is going to be, but not much. Most of this is going to be in shadow. And then, of course, as we round away from the light source, now we're obviously in shadow over here. But there is going to be some highlight on some of these feathers as we get closer towards um, the middle of his neck again. Just making sure the shadows are nice and fleshed out. Yeah. There'd be some highlights probably through here. And now the cheek, I'm going to say we have maybe a little bit, even with the hair flopping over. I want to make sure that's nice and prominent coming off the bottom of the beak. We'll give him a little bit here, just like we do with under the eyes. Even if it's not accurate, sometimes it helps create the illusion, so we'll do that. All right, now for the lighter brown. So the lighter brown and the that really dark color, I can't distinguish, so I'm gonna have to turn that dark color off. 
All right, and just like with the other, right, as it's rounding into the face and such, it would go into shadow. The little section of feathers here follows the um, eye and the beak around, so this might have a little bit of highlight as it kind of comes around um, because of the nature of it, but under the eye, all of this is going to be in shadow. But the top is going to be in highlight. Okay, and add a little extra light to distinguish that from the um, right under the eye. That would be in a deeper shadow. And this highlight would be going into shadow as it comes down this way. That's that edge that's in shadow because it's an edge. Giving the little cheek, again, that little burst of highlight to push it in front of these little ear flaps or these little um, feather flaps. Now I'm actually going to go back and fix some white under the beak that I left. And I erase that because there was a dot, a white dot. And while I can erase the white dot out, it's easier if I could just go back and undo to get rid of the white dot. That's the problem with digital art is sometimes the act of putting your hand down to draw causes white dots to pop up and you don't always notice them. And now I'm gonna do just a little bit of refinement on the brown I have in place. If there's any obvious gaps and that's not from a darker color. It just means I missed the spot. Um, see, just like that. Now that, luckily, is in the middle of the dark, so I can literally just undo that without having to worry about it because it's on a different layer. Now on an on a animal like this or a bird where there's all this detail, I'm often going back and forth between the different colors because as I'm fleshing out detail, I realize I miss spots here or there, and that's fine. It's, it's sometimes easier to see what effect you're going for um, once more details are in place, right? So um, you just keep going back and forth and refining it until you get the right sort of balance. And sometimes as you're doing it, you know, you make changes on the fly as well. That's something that's that I do a lot of times, especially on a composition like this, where I'm looking at something and making decisions based on if I think something looks right or wrong um, from whatever I've drawn. Fleshing out feathers in a different way, adding a little bit more um, here or there, just making sure it all makes sense and it all works together. And that there's no like big glaring gaps anywhere where I thought a different color was taking over or something like that. Yeah, I think I think he is looking pretty cute. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of refining and then we're gonna get into the beak and then the eyes. I think some of this up here is just a little, little too dark. All right, and now into the beak. I'm gonna have to fix some of this too. It looks a little too jagged, but let's get on the beak first, and then we'll worry about that. I technically have just a little bit of a, I don't know if I'll be able to pull it off, but from this angle, you should be able to see their mouth. But if I can't pull it off, that's fine. And of course, just like the shadow, right, we've gotta bring it over. So we have a highlight on this side and the shadow on the other. On this side, again, in that shadow, and then as we loop it over towards the right side, it'll catch the highlight. Now, just like I do sometimes, I'm keeping this light pen pressure right now so that I can sort of, you know, it can be a little easier for me to sort out um, where the highlight and shadows are kicking in, especially because I need to be mindful of how I've done this, so it's going to need to kind of mimic that. So I'm just being a little bit more careful, because some of this will be in highlight. 
I'm actually going to give a little burst over here just to indicate it's a little higher. Even though I'm just trying to make sure that's separated out. And this is going to be under these feathers, so there is going to be a little shadowing on the edges of this side. And then of course, as this is rounding under, there's going to be some shadowing there too. And then that last color, and then I'll, I'll kind of come down in here and fix some of that. And I don't want this edge to be too jagged, right? Like I want to make sure it doesn't look like feathers because it's a beak or, you know, fur. I want to make sure that's clear, but still leaving it a dark gray without putting full highlight. Or leaving it grayish without a full highlight and giving it a little bit of a highlight that was too much and then as it connects into here there's obviously a shadow as well so it looks almost too boxy that's my issue with down here so all I'm gonna do is really just temper some of the shadows not putting full pin pressure I'm just kind of going over it Some of it's probably okay. Yeah, and see just that little bit makes it look a little bit more natural. Sometimes you want an extreme shadow, and sometimes it can take away um, from the overall effect, so. Just making a few minor adjustments just like I did with the brown into the fluff on the head, making sure it's nice and vibrant. The final, you know, mix of colors are only as bright as um, the colors next to them, right? So the gray will only appear black with the right amount of white, etc., etc. So having that color interaction and making sure it's balanced to the right brightness can really help making sure that something looks you know right or bright enough or you know making sure the white doesn't look gray yeah that, just that little bit gives it an extra pop and this would be in pretty extreme shadow because of the rest of the hair but it's kind of floating up here Now their eyes are brown, as is common, and a reddish brown. Um, they do have trouble seeing because of their head fluffs, so let's see how we do this here. And of course they wouldn't be able to look straight ahead, but that can help um, when you're Um, drawing something engaging, people like to look in an animal's eyes, so even though they wouldn't be able to necessarily see perfectly straight ahead, their eyes are off just a bit to the side, um, it can help to, to make it look like they're looking straight ahead. And then I always take this select tool, and I know that one eye is bigger than the other. I always take the select tool and make sure it's even. And we're not going to add, I'm going to add a little bit of highlight but not a ton. So I'm gonna temper off what I usually do because of how their eyes are. And with the flaps of hair coming over, it would go into shadow much quicker. But I still wanna make sure they're visible. Again, that can help with engaging. May decide it's too much. Just getting just a little jagged on this side, so I wanted to make sure it was still Straight. All right, now I'm gonna give a little bit of an eye flare, nothing much, but it really can really help make a subject seem alive, even if you wouldn't necessarily see it. I don't know that you would because of how much um, hair fluff that's in the way, but we're gonna do it anyway. I'm actually gonna 
match this up with this one even though it's over top and then I'm going to erase out manually draw some edges to it okay so maybe I can bring you up just a little bit yeah okay means I'll have to erase out less but we're going to take just this edge make sure it's full and clear away and we're also going to take some of this and just draw it like there's feathers in the way that can actually do a lot to mimic the way some light would hit adding just that little bit of texture to the side because this would cast um, a shadow Just that texture makes it look like um, some feathers are in the way. <laughs> it really is a cute bird. <laughs> All right, so that is how you draw a Polish buff lace chicken. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.